Hi, my name is Andrew Fleming. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're doing at the site and our efforts to implement Gutenberg. Uh, my niche is the first of the Dow Jones portfolio to try and experiment with this. Um, we now have some other properties that are doing things well and some larger efforts in the works, uh, but this represents the, the first foray in, into the new editor. Uh, but before we go any further, I feel like I should warn you how this ends. Uh, we don't have Gutenberg working. Uh, it's not in production, it's not there yet. Um, and I'll walk through why that is. So I, I don't have a snappy demo for you, I don't have even screenshots yet, uh, but life is about the journey, um, so I'm going to share ours. Uh, let me first introduce a little bit about what Moneyish is. Uh, it's the newest site in the Dow Jones portfolio. It's only a year old, uh, 13 months old this week. Um, it sits at the intersection of personal finance, life, and career. And it recognizes that the Venn diagram of these things is rapidly approaching a circle. Uh, so money aims to explore the world through the, tra the transactions, both uh, financial and otherwise, uh, of everyday life through features, essays, explainers, advice, good old-fashioned empathy. Uh, money is seeking to help you understand and succeed in your place in the world. Uh, and we find it's really resonating. Uh, we've drawn a sizable audience of young, professional, and aspirational people, uh, the latter two of which are hallmarks of the Dow Jones portfolio, I'm happy to say and the former of which is our most important growth opportunity. Uh, we soared right past a uh, million monthly unis in four months, uh, purely organically, which is a lot of fun uh, to be able to do with a new site. Uh, but at Dow Jones, uh, money is, is a little bit more than a site, it's also a bit of an attitude. Uh, we're a small, scrappy team. We have just five folks in the newsroom. We have one developer, uh, which allows quick communication, quick collaboration, uh, a lot of fun with that. Uh, we're built entirely on VIP Go, which is uh, uh, the second site that Dow Jones you to do that. Uh, it gives us a lot of flexibility, scalability, uh, minimal effort, and it gives us access to the vast plugin community, so we're building things faster, and we're not wasting time on problems that have already been solved. Uh, those of you who share experiences with big companies like mine know we spend a lot of time solving problems that have already been solved. Uh, we experiment in, in everything we do, uh, and I mean that, we actually do. Uh, we're constantly iterating on our workflows, whether it's in the newsroom, uh, tweaking the interface, or uh, working with the Google Docs integration, headline testing, image testing. We're trying to find the right balance, like many of you, uh, for an informed newsroom between data and editorial insight. Uh, on the tech side, we jump at the chance to use plugins to extend our reach without losing time. Uh, on the revenue side, we're constantly evolving our options there uh, with a mix of native advertising, uh, non-traditional placements, anything we can do to avoid the dreaded banner in the right rail, uh, which we don't have a right rail, so that becomes easier. Uh, this experimentation helps us with our third tenet, which is to be everywhere the audience is. You know, our site isn't just mobile first, it's experience first, it's the same experience, no matter your screen size, no matter your device. Uh, we want it to be where the audience was with a voice interface. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I'll, I'll join Brad in plugging WordCamp for Publishers. Uh, at the last WordCamp for Publishers, I met Tom Harrigan and his Alexa uh, Voice WP plugin. We spun that up the week after uh, WordCamp, and uh, we had it in three days. It was amazing. Uh, we wanted to be, or we wanted to try something a little more interactive with our audience. So we spun up a chatbot with uh, Messenger, so we can give career tips and advice and things you wouldn't ask uh, necessarily your friends and family, you can ask Moneyish, uh, uh, and you know, we give you advice there for you, your friends, and everyone's favorite friend, Cambridge Analytica. Uh, but these things allow us, uh, you know, not just to be flexible and nimble and fast for us, which we really appreciate, uh, but it helps us share with the rest of the company, with the other six major properties across the business, and we get to be kind of the test bed and the experimentation arm of Dow Jones. Uh, so that's a lot of fun for me. Uh, certainly the most fun I've had in the company is complex. Uh, which brings us to Gutenberg. When we were looking at this, uh, you know, almost a year ago, uh, a lot of questions popped up right at the beginning, you know, as I'm sure uh, you all facing the same things. You know, is it going to work out of the box? It's a plugin. Intuition says probably not, but we've come to expect a pretty low barrier to entry for plugins and new integrations. Uh, if it doesn't work out of the box, is that because of some custom code we've done? Spoiler alert again, yes. Uh, but will that lead to massive rewrites? What's the hurdle there? What's the level of effort? Uh, you know, what are we getting ourselves into? 
Uh, beyond that, once we get it working, how do we introduce it to the newsroom? Um, I'm very intrigued in the ramp plugin. I'm happy to hear about that. Uh, so we've been, talking, we've been you know, trying to figure out ourselves how to stand up these two things at the same time, how to train the editors, how to move them over. You know, it's a small team, which means they're flexible, but it's a small team, which means they don't have a lot of time to play with things. You know, always important for us when we're working with a single developer, how do we best use his time? How do we not, you know, spend the next six months just playing with Gutenberg and trying to make it work? Um, and lastly, I put it up there because this is a question we actually asked ourselves out loud at the beginning of every Denver. Is this worth it? Is this going to be worth the effort? Um, and the strong voice from the editorial side and the tech side said yes. So off we went. If we rewind about nine months ago, right around the time Matt Mullenweg posted his sort of Gutenberg manifesto, um, we were looking at getting involved. We wanted to be an early adopter. We were all excited. We went and installed version 0 0.8 of the plugin. And to our great surprise and amusement, it was a total non-starter. Uh, no custom meta boxes meant we could do nothing. Uh, so we had to put that up on the shelf a little bit. It turns out there is there is a too early in early adopter. Uh, but come the holidays around the new year, uh, some of the automatic folks were kind enough to come to our offices, give us some on-site demos. Uh, the editorial team saw the vision of the future and fell in love, and we're clamoring again. Uh, so we tried it again this time. Uh, 1.9, we got our meta boxes. Yay. Uh, but we could not save a post to save our lives. Uh, and thus began a debugging routine uh, that has now become our standard procedure for any new version of the Gutenberg plugin. Uh, we install it. We disable all of our plugins one by one, find the culprits there. Then we disable all of our customizations one by one, find the culprits there. Uh, and we end up with a list of things uh, that I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, things that are not working. Uh, so this really, it, it, it helped us in that it, it sort of paved the way for how to structure our experimentation with Gutenberg. You know, we found out that we could dedicate a certain amount of time per month to a little bit of playtime with Gutenberg. We have this process now for testing, uh, listing out all the things that aren't working, and that helps us track, you know, not just what's happening uh, with Gutenberg, the progress of Gutenberg as it specifically applies to us, um, but also it, it helps us track the sort of mountain of work we expect we'll eventually have to do. Uh, more recently, in the last few months, uh, we've tried some newer versions. You can see we've, we've picked up our pace a little bit. Uh, we just were playing with 2.6 yesterday, uh, so I don't have a lot of information there. Um, but our main blockers uh, continue to be uh, the two big things, right? Custom code that we've written that doesn't play nice, uh, and some of the third-party plugins. Um, you know, the conflicts with the custom code, we can get through those if we dedicate the time, uh, but the plugins, we can't. We're dependent on those, and some of them are so core to our workflow, we, we can't move on uh, without that. Uh, in the short term, to get around some of that, we've uh, spun up a fresh instance of WordPress without the custom code, without the plugins that are causing problems, um, to help us better understand it, play with it a little bit more. Uh, it has the added benefit of giving the editorial team a little walled garden to play in, uh, which, to my great surprise, they actually do. Uh, that's very helpful for us and will help uh, in the introduction down the road. Uh, so what are the things? This is just this is sort of a high level of this uh, list of things we've run into as examples, uh, since it probably will not apply much uh, to you. But we have, uh, you know, we have some republished features that we wrote ourselves. We couldn't find a plugin that had a particular behavior we wanted, uh, so we wrote our own. Uh, that's a big one for us, and uh, that doesn't that doesn't work very well. Um, some validations, some custom validations I mentioned earlier, uh, ran into some problems. Uh, we have some particular rules around RSS feeds that power some features. Um, you know, all of these things in and of themselves, not major investments in work. Uh, but they add up quite quickly. Uh, on the plugin side, not to name names, they're here, but Getty. Getty Images, uh, we cannot get that to work in the media gallery at all, and that one, uh, like many of you, is really core to our workflow. Um, another surprise, Media Explorer, we could only get that to work in the gallery block, we couldn't get it to work uh, outside. Um, and then we have, a, we have an internal plugin that, that's custom to us, WSJ Video, that's it's the same thing. We're finding a lot of our uh, a lot of our media we can't get to work outside the gallery block, um, but we are learning quite a bit. Uh, 
you know, for us, the, the biggest unknown today is still the biggest unknown at the beginning, which is, uh, you know, how much time is this going to take for us to adapt to Gutenberg? Uh, we're still working that through, but it's certainly lessened since the fall. Um, but it's still going to be the biggest uh, hurdle for us. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, the, the second point here, we, we really need the, the plugin community to get on board. Uh, it's, it's heartening to hear how much uh, VIP is reaching out and getting those things moving. I, I hope some of you in this room take that to heart, because uh, we need you. Uh, uh, more broadly, it's helped with our internal processes. It's helped us build uh, this kind of uh, what we started calling prospective development uh, into our workflow, so we can now carve out a little bit of time every month for something that we want to work, but don't know if it's going to work, and don't know if it's, uh, if it's totally worth the effort. Um, and lastly, because I do want to end on a positive note, uh, we, we really do think it's got promise. You know, nine months later, and the editorial team is still clamoring for it. And if you know editorial teams, you know that that's really big. Uh, our engineer is still really excited about playing with it, despite all of the other shiny things that have come across his desk. Um, and you know, the Moneyish article template really lends itself to this kind of block-based thing. It's a really visual template already. Uh, so we're still excited about trying to bring a visual element to laying out our pages. Uh, we just uh, we just needed to uh, to catch up. Uh, so that's it. It's been our journey. I would love to hear yours. Uh, here are some ways to reach me. How many good terms or puns have you come up with? Your favorites. <laughs> Well, um, our engineer, when he first saw it, he was like, so this is coming and we don't have a choice? And he instantly went Gutenberg. Nice. <laughs> nice. I have another question if nobody else does, but it's, it's, it could wait. OK, thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. Off topic on your, um, your uh, million monthly UVs and Alexa. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about uh, how many Alexa users, people you have? Uh, I cannot, but I will say we're still trying to find the right formula to draw people in on Alexa. You have to ask the question with Alexa first, and then we'll Alexa, how many money ish readers <laughs> Funny, have you a should hot ask. mic in their ass? <laughs> Uh, not as many as we hope. Yeah. That's probably not surprising. Yeah, Chris? If 10 minutes wasn't enough and people wanted to get a little bit more info about yourself and money and your kind of journey, is there a recent podcast maybe that you've been on that you can share with them? I was happy to join uh, Dan Macro and his Story of Bottle podcast. I think that was two or three weeks ago now it went live, so you can good. find that. I'm embarrassed somebody actually listened to it. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.